In the land of dreams, everything makes sense except that clanging noise that won't go away. The first impulse is to integrate it into the dream, but it keeps clanging, and it refuses to make sense, and it refuses to go away. In the struggle to make sense, the reality of the dream fades and refocuses on the alarm clock next to my bed. I reach over and push down the knob that turns it off. Now, it all makes sense again. After all, that's what's most important. When things don't make sense, who can gauge the power that is unleashed to force it to make sense again? Inductive logic is that thing that, when we live in Potemkin's villages, those happy, artificial, uh, happy-faced places that were created to amuse the czar and assure him that all was well amongst the people, it makes us ask, where does the make-believe stop? And what is that clanging noise? I'm not here today to talk about the clanging of the closing bell on Wall Street. I'm not here to talk about how the Terminator left the state of California with emergency bells clanging out of a state of alarm. I'm here to talk about Christine Taylor Green, a third grader who had just been elected to the Mesa Verde Elementary Council. Knowing of her interest in politics, her neighbor Susan Heilman said, why don't you come along with me today? You know, our congresswoman is meeting people at the Safeway. Sure, said Christina, and off she went. When the shooting started, she took a bullet through the heart, and she never heard the clang, nor anything else, ever again. Dorwin Stoddard was an old man. He loved his wife, maybe. So he didn't hesitate to throw himself over her and take one in the head. The weapon was semi-automatic, so the young gunman had to separately aim at each victim and make a separate decision at each trigger pull. Clang, Dorothy Morris. Clang, John Roll. Clang, Gabe Zimmerman. And clang, clang. Clang, 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 until there were no more. Do not ask what forces of enslavement, what organizations are perfectly happy to pump it up and move it along. Talk instead about individuals and family values, because that is something that does not dislodge the notion of the dream. And whatever you do, don't listen to the clang. Listen instead to the radio. Watch the television and read the newspaper. There are so many choices. They could not possibly all be saying the same thing and be wrong. This is America. And we don't allow all of the clangs to be owned by the same folks. Just ask the Indians, if you can find them. In nuclear physics, you throw high-speed things at a little target, not because you care about the target, but because in recovering from the explosion, the forces that are all around us reveal themselves. The more intense the explosion, the stronger the forces of correction that are revealed. Oliver Stone threw a movie at the target and the forces came out of the ether to correct him. Bobby Kennedy threw a team of prosecutors at a target and the forces corrected him too. At least, thank God, we have the military. <laughs> they are here to remind us that all of the bad guys who put on similar uniforms and speak with foreign accents and attack our cities in force can be defeated by our guys in well-coordinated, precise actions. It's a good thing that the bad guys aren't hip to wearing suits instead of uniforms, mm -hmm. and they come from somewhere else rather than from inside, and they speak with foreign accents instead of a diversity of local ones. As the bell rings for the final round, you find Sweeney Todd and the fundamentalists. It's actually more of a jingle of bells as you enter America's own little shop of horrors. You say your perception is in need of a little trim. I'm sure we can handle that. Whatever you have that doesn't fit into our world view goes down a little chute to the basement. It has been the practice of our religion for hundreds of years. It is quite simply easier to modify the perception of clang than to correct it. Do ring the bell, won't you? It lets Mrs. Lovell know that more meat pies are on the way.
High up somewhere in Tibet, they throw a log on chains at a large bell to find the resonance within the human heart. Before you try that around here, though, know this. The most likely way to integrate the sound of an alarm into a dream is to smash both the clock and the bell ringer. The mind that guides the hand in the iron fist is not asleep. And it profits greatly from the sleep of others. If you know what's good for you, you will seek not to find for whom the bell tolls. You'll just silence the damn thing before there's a lot of trouble. Bravo. Bravo.